I've been running Content 10X for four years, so I thought I'd share four lessons from four years in business. Now, these lessons are related to business and content, so I hope you find them really useful. Welcome to the Content 10X Podcast, the show where content creators learn how to harness the power of content repurposing. And now, your host, Amy Woods. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Content 10X podcast. I'm your host, Amy Woods, the founder of Content 10X. And this week's episode is about four lessons learned in four years of business. Now, as I record this episode, it's May 2021, which marks four years of Content 10X being in business. So I decided it would be useful to share a little bit about that and hopefully provide some tips and insights. Now, I took my first client on in May 2017, and I remember it so well because I would asked a question in a Q&A for a membership that I was a member of. And whilst the spotlight shine on me as I was asking my question, I also got to share about Content 10X and what we do. And bam, someone who had been on the call got in touch with me straight after and asked if we could speak. So we spoke, I think it was the very next day, and she started working with us straight away. And that was my first client. That was back in May 2017. And I say us, she started working with us, but back then my first ever client, it wasn't us, it was me. So me, myself and I. So I'm so pleased to have gone from me, myself and I to having the great team that I now have in the four years that we've been in business. And I know that four years may not exactly sound like a long time to have been in business, but I guess it's just all relative, isn't it? So to someone just starting out in the first year or two, I'm sure or four years seems like a way off. I certainly remember in my early days, four years would have seemed like, wow, you know, that's a long time. But of course, to someone 10, 15, 20 years in business, you're probably thinking (laughs) four years is still very much a baby. And that's kind of how I feel too. I still refer to Content 10X as a startup, to be honest, even though I guess technically it's not, but I feel like we're only just getting started. Now that said, there have been loads and loads of lessons learned along the way. So I thought for this episode, marking four years or thereabouts, why not share four big lessons learned in four years of content 10x? Now, I really couldn't decide whether to share content lessons or business lessons, but what I've ended up doing really is sharing lessons that span over both. So I hope you find them really useful. So here goes number one. What got you here won't get to you there. Now that's a saying I'm sure you've likely heard before, but I would add to that, what got you here will catastrophically prevent you from getting there. Now, that's a lot more of a bolder version of that statement. Now, someone said this or something similar on a podcast episode I listened to, and I feel really bad that I can't attribute to that person because I can't remember who it was, but it really, really resonated with me. And it's so true. So what got you here will catastrophically prevent you from getting there. Now, I've learned that you've got to be flexible and open-minded as you grow your business or your career. Now, so many things have changed for Content 10X and the way I thought things were going to work out, from the way that we offer our services to the team structure and so much more. Now, things are different to how I thought they'd be because you live, you learn and you adapt and the world around you does too. Your clients change and their wants and needs and even the tools that you use, technology changes. So we have to change and adapt. But I think it's a lot more than that. It's not just changing things when you realize there's a better way. So when you got some feedback or you just spotted something that wasn't optimal and you improved the way you did that, it's much, much more than that because it's also about changing things when they might be working and you might be really comfortable with them. Because to bring about new results that you want, you have to stop with the old ways, even if they work, because they work, but only to get you to where you are. Now, it's a bit like when you're training at the gym, let's say you're strength training. Now, what tends to happen is that you can follow a program and you can see really good results from it, but your body will become used to that program and the exercises that you're doing and your progress will plateau. So you'll stop seeing the gains that you want to saw as your body just becomes comfortable. Even if you feel like you are working really hard, the results level off. So you have to mix things up. You have to introduce a new training regime, a new program, and you need to challenge your body in different ways so that you will break through that plateau. 
And I think that you can plateau in business too, unless you remember what got you here will catastrophically prevent you from getting there. And you look at what things you need to change. So for me, it's been some really big changes to our services, our offerings to our clients and with the team too. And that can be really hard. So saying goodbye to people who have always been there and then welcoming new people so they have new ideas, new experiences, and you hire the new people at a time when you know what you want to achieve and you need help to get there. And bearing in mind that the people who have been with you from the start, they may not even align with where you want to go now, and that's a really important assessment to make. So for this lesson, I urge you to stop and think about this. What are you doing that perhaps has always worked and may still be working, but might actually be the barrier to what you want to achieve in the future? Okay, lesson number two, treat content like an investment. So you need to have a long-term view when it comes to content. Now, I'm not saying that I came into this thinking content was a short-term play, just a really quick win and that it's a big lesson for me to learn that you need to play the long game because that's not the case. But I think it's longer term than people realize sometimes, but equally it's bigger gains than people realize too, far bigger rewards. And I think there are so many similarities with content and an investment portfolio because with investments, you put some thought into what you invest in to begin with. So you do some research and we should do similar with our content. We should know our audience. We should know what content works and we have to make sure that we don't invest blindly our time and our resources into content the way you wouldn't invest your money blindly in your investment portfolio. Now, also with investments, we can't expect to invest in something then after a week or two, make a big return. You really need to be patient. It's the same with content to a certain extent. Fortunately, with content, you can get immediate results. For example, lots of views on your blog posts or video, engagement on social media, conversations take place. So lots can happen when you publish content, but it will also bring you benefits in the long term too. It keeps on giving. So you build up content over time, you build up your brand, you build up trust and authority. And what I see is that you are building up a whole load of equity and you build and build and build and build through all this content that you create. And then at some point you start that equity release. So all that value starts to come out of all the content that you've been creating because you might publish something today. And someone thinking of working with you will see that content two years from today and that piece of content helps them make the decision. Or you might not know that someone listens to your podcast every single week for a year before they finally get in touch with you and then they end up being the best client that you've ever had. Hey, just a little break from this week's episode to let you know about becoming a content 10x insider. If you want more content repurposing tips and advice, then why not join hundreds of business owners, marketers, and content creators who get them delivered straight to their inbox once a week by subscribing to the content 10x newsletter. As well as tips and advice, you get industry updates, inspiring stories, exclusive content offers, and more. You can subscribe at content10x.com forward slash newsletter, and there's a link in the show show notes too. Okay, back to this week's episode. And one more analogy when it comes to content and investments. So with investments, you need to review them over time and you need to try to optimize over time too. So optimizing with your content, what do I mean by that? So review the content that you've put out there, review the content you've published, you can update it and you can optimize it. So for example, with a blog post, you may want to go and make some updates, bring it more up to date and optimize for specific keywords. And you can keep doing that period with your published blog posts. Also, you may want to review the content that you published on social media and see if it's time to publish again as well. So I talk about this in episode 178 of the Content 10X podcast called How to Create a Content Treasure Trove for Unlimited Repurposing. So go check that out, content10x.com forward slash 178, where I talk about reviewing and optimizing your social media content as well. So there you go. Content and investments are very similar. It's a long-term play and you need to optimize over time and you will see rewards immediately, but also rewards that will keep on giving. 
Okay, the third lesson, remember what your goals are and focus on them. Now, this might seem obvious, but I honestly see a lot of people get caught up in metrics that exist and are perhaps quite easy to get hold of and review, but they are not what you are working towards. Those metrics do not signify to you whether you have succeeded in what you want to achieve and they're not part of your bigger strategy because you're looking at metrics that aren't aligned with your goal in the first place. Now, for example, and this is just a a simplified example. But if you start a B2B business podcast with the intention of raising your profile in your industry, opening up doors to a new network through conducting podcast interviews and having more interesting and insightful and engaging content to publish on your website and on social media, all leading to gaining more high value clients, then perhaps podcast downloads are not the metric that you should be focusing on. Because nowhere in that list of goals for the show did I say to have the most popular number one podcast for your industry. I didn't say that. And if you were going for that goal, then that would be the right metric, the number one podcast and a huge number of listeners. Then you would be looking at podcast downloads and you'd have a totally different strategy to what you are doing today. But instead, maybe what you would be looking at would be how many new clients as a result of the podcast, how many referrals, how many leads, how much engagement on your social media, how much more traffic are you getting to your website and just overall business growth. If you never set out to be the next Joe Rogan, then podcast downloads are not necessarily your metric. So just remember that. Don't get caught up in being the next biggest YouTuber or the next biggest podcaster and looking at all those downloads and views. If that isn't actually your intention and look at what is important to you and your business. And finally, the fourth lesson in four years. So when it comes to running your business and content development, find a system that works for you. Now, with content, it's difficult to find the time to come up with quality ideas for content. I know that. I know it can be really hard. And it's even harder if you fit it in here and there and don't have a rhythm or a system. So if you want to commit to content and a content strategy, then finding a way to make it a non-negotiable and getting it wrapped up in a routine and a process in a system is really, really important. But what works for someone else might not work for you. There's too much content out there sharing the best way to do things and the only way to do things. And most of the time it can be people providing, you know, really useful tips and it can be helpful, which is great, but sometimes it's not as well. Sometimes it's not that useful and misguided tips, but there's no right way often. There's just a right way for you. For example, just because someone says you should batch record content doesn't mean that's right for you. If maybe you don't have the stamina and you only have enough energy to give your all to one piece of content at a time, then batch recording isn't going to be great for you. And there's loads of examples of that in business too. For some people, maybe a profit first model works and for some people it just doesn't. And that's okay. So really the point here is to find what works for you and don't get bogged down in lots of different content telling you that there is one single way. Develop systems and develop processes and rigor to what you want to do and stick to that. And finally, so maybe this is four and a half tips, not four, but involve outside help to know what you should be spending your time on and where you should get expert help. For example, you know, if you decide you're going to build an extension on your house, you don't typically follow YouTube tutorials and suddenly become the architect, the bricklayer, the roofer, the plasterer, and so on. You don't do it all yourself. It will take forever and it might not be the best result in the end as well, but you wouldn't do that. You typically hire help. And the same goes with business and content. So recognize why you could do with hiring help. Now there's my four or maybe four and a half lessons that I've learned in four years of business. And I've learned way, way, way more than four. This could have actually been a very long podcast episode. It could have been 40 lessons in four years, but I wouldn't do that. That would be way too long. So I hope that you found this episode really, really useful. If you would like to find out more about what we do at Content 10X and how we help businesses to maximize their content by repurposing, then please do head to content10x.com where you'll find out more. And do follow us on social media too. You can catch Content 10X on all the social media platforms. So all that's left to say is thank you so, so much for listening and I'll catch you in the next episode. 